Okay, case number four, guys. A uh, 45 year old woman with visual and pituitary dysfunction, and you are shown a slightly off midline uh, sagittal postgatolinium T1 weighted image on your left, and on your right, a coronal T1 weighted image following gadolinium administration, too. Give you a couple of seconds to look at the findings. I think you should be able to suggest uh, not one, but perhaps like 10 differential diagnoses in this case. Ready for the question? Yes? Okay. The least likely diagnosis in this case is A, a macroadenoma, B, a meningioma, C, lymphocytic hypophysitis, D, an aneurysm, E, sarcoidosis. Let's see the answer. And the majority of you said aneurysm, and that is correct. Uh, in this case, if you paid attention, the vessels in the cavernosinus and the supracellular system were involved by the mass, and an aneurysm will be unlikely to do, do that. I have a couple of aneurysm cases seen here. You can see in this case, you see the neck connecting with the internal carotid artery, and you see the artifact of flow in the mid aspect of the aneurysm where the blood is flowing a little bit slower. And then in this other case, which was a little bit more difficult uh, to say exactly what it is on the postcatalinium image, there is significant and homogeneous enhancement of the aneurysm, but you can see the flow artifacts to both sides of the aneurysm, something that can help you make the diagnosis that you're talking about a vascular lesion. Okay, question number two. Typical features of an intracellular meningioma are A, homogeneous enhancement, B, dural tails, C, encasement and narrowing of the adjacent blood vessels, D, a pneumocinose dilatans, and E, all of the above. Start the countdown, please. Okay, which are the typical features? All of the above, and you know that when you're given a multiple choice question that says all of the above, there's like a 99% chance that that is gonna be the correct answer. So there's no science to that. Okay, let's take a look at the, uh, you don't need to be a neurologist to answer it correctly. Okay, let's take a look at the findings. In this case, we have homogeneous enhancement on the sagittal and coronal image. We have uh, a dural tail anteriorly and probably one back here posteriorly. We have encasement of the blood vessels. You can see here two more surrounding the blood vessels bilaterally, and you can see here also surrounding a blood vessel. This dark area, linear area, was actually a blood vessel in this patient. And then you have a finding which I think is fairly typical for meningiomas involved in this region, which is the hyperarration of the sphenoid sinus, in this case, the anterior portion of the sphenoid sinus, and this is what we call a pneumosinus dilatans, and there are primary pneumosinus dilatans in which where there is an obstructive lesion actually causing expansion of the sinus, or you had a seal that drain and the sinus remains expanded. And there is a second type of pneumosinus dilatans, which is the secondary pneumosinus dilatans, which is what this is secondary to an extracellular, uh, extra sphenoid mass, in this case, a meningioma. So let's take a look at the differential diagnosis of these masses, guys. We all know them very well. Macroadenoma, impossible to tell, may extend into the cavernous sinus and surround the vessels, like seen in the meningioma. However, macroadenoma does tend to narrow the vessels a little bit less often than an intracellular meningioma. If you look statistically, an intracellular meningioma is extremely rare when compared to a macroadenoma. Second, you can have hemorrhage. In this case, you have a macroadenoma that's split superiorly, and the hemorrhage is compressing the optic chiasm. And if you have compression of the optic chiasm, multiple cranial nerve findings, and headaches due to hydrocephalus, you have the so-called pituitary apoplexy syndrome, but you don't have to have uh, apoplexy to have hemorrhage within the pituitary gland. Granulo eosinophilic granuloma may involve the pituitary gland in the stalk. These are children. Uh, it is a difficult diagnosis uh, to make unless you get a biopsy. Rathke's clepsis, we see them quite often. This is a typical case with a hyperintense rounded lesion in the middle of the pituitary gland. They can have variable signal intensity and they can have a variable appearance too. This is also a Rathke's cleft cyst in which there is a large mass partially necrotic with a rim of enhancement extending into the supracellular cistern and also extending into the sphenoid sinus. In this case, we thought there was an intracellular craniopharyngiomas, but intracellular craniopharyngiomas are extremely rare. Only 1% of all in, uh, intracranial uh, craniopharyngiomas are intracellular, while a Rathke's cleft cyst is much more common. 
hyperplasia of the pituitary gland. We know it happens physiologically in the first three months of life. It happens physiologically before adolescence. It may happen before the menstrual period. It may happen before a lady gives birth or immediately in the postpartum period. It may also happen in patients that are hyper, uh, hypothyroid. Hypophysitis, nothing specific about this. Patients presented with acute hypopituitarism, uh, some of the cases do tend to present in the early postpartum period. So that may be a clue that you have a lymphocytic hypophysitis. Metastasis, generally patients that have diffuse metastatic disease presenting with acute hypopit2, a nonspecific mass. This was a necrotic metastasis from breast carcinoma to the pituitary gland. And sarcoidosis, again, tends to be nonspecific, but I think findings in other parts of the body or other parts of the intracranial compartment may help you. In this case, you see an enhancing mass in the cella, but you also see that there is enhancement of the cavernous sinus and perhaps even of the dura of the middle cranial fossa in a patient that has uh, sarcoidosis. So let's talk a little bit about intracellular meningioma. They constitute 15% uh, of all intracranial meningiomas are paracellular, not intracellular. When they arise in the paracellular region, in the walls of the cavernous sinus, the diaphragm, the cella, the tuberculum cella, or the clivus, but actually very few of them are purely intracellular like the one that I show you. And what should make you suspect that you have an intracellular meningioma? Same things that a meningioma shows elsewhere. Same T1 and T2 signal as the cortex, homogeneous enhancement, encasing and narrowing of the arteries, like seen in this case, dural tails, pneumocinus dilatans, and occasionally a visible pituitary gland, implying that the lesion is not arising from the pituitary gland.